Hello world, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the advantages of no code over code, and which no code website builder, Webflow or Editor X, was better in my personal experience. If you've been subscribed to my channel, which by the way you totally should be, you'll have noticed that I created the exact same website, Gumroad, in a few different platforms. Code, so that's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, Webflow, and EditorX. No, it's not because I ran out of video ideas. It's actually because I wanted to compare all of these uh, different platforms, and I wanted to share with you guys my own opinions and experience. Obviously, there is a lot more to both Webflow and EditorX that I won't be covering in this video. So that's things like the CMS, the e-commerce capabilities, and the collaboration. But um, this video is mostly going to be my perspective, so things that I used um, these platforms for. Okay, first let's talk about the advantages that no-code has over code. The most important thing for a web developer or a web designer has to be the time, right? So the amount of time that you spend developing the same website. Now, of course, no-code is going to be faster. Everybody knows that. But what parts exactly are going to be sped up? When I first came across the Gumroad website, I, I built it in Webflow. So when I was attempting to build it in code, I already had all the styling ready and the, the classes that I was going to use, how it was going to be structured with the HTML, and it totally sped up my development time with code. I was able to spend uh, a lot less time on that HTML and CSS part. But the place where Webflow's capabilities really shine is in the interactions, namely the parallax interaction that's present in most of uh, Gumroad's grid sections. It took me hours or even days to create the exact same interaction in JavaScript that would have taken me 30 seconds with Webflow. And it was so, so frustrating, especially because I'd gotten so used to the way it works in Webflow. Now, yes, no code is great, but there's so many options. Which ones exactly are we going to choose, right? Well, today I'm going to be comparing Webflow and EditorX, which is a new tool by Wix aimed for professionals. I have some categories to sort of guide us through this. Okay, let's talk Webflow. So what's my personal experience with Webflow? Well, even before I dove into Webflow, I was doing some pretty heavy web development with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And so Webflow was something that felt very natural to me. It had the exact same names for properties as there would be in CSS for the styling, and building a website in Webflow was just fairly easy for me. Obviously, with things like interactions and Lottie animations, things that I hadn't really messed with in code, I had to look up some tutorials. But overall, it just felt like a more visual way to do what I'd already been doing for so long. I also had some experience with things like After Effects and Premiere Pro. So once I found out that Webflow interactions were similar to keyframing, I was good to go on that end. I do understand that Webflow can be pretty overwhelming at first. With the flexbox, the grid, the position absolute, it is a lot, but I do feel that once you sort of overcome that learning curve, you really have the power to create some amazing things. When I first tried EditorX, it was when I'd already had so much experience with Webflow. So the only reason I actually tried it was because of this YouTube series that I was planning on creating back then. Obviously, because I was so used to um, Webflow, EditorX was a little bit difficult for me at first, but um, I watched some tutorials and most of the things were self-explanatory anyway, so I figured it out pretty quickly. For some reason, the actual editor, for me at least, in EditorX, was very slow. And it still is now. Everything else on my uh, sort of uh, web browser works fine, even inclu including Webflow, so I was wondering why there was an issue with this. So I did some research to try and see if this was like an isolated issue, or if it was something that other people were facing too. And it turns out that I'm not alone. Basic tasks like undoing or redoing, or even having the editor itself load up when I first open a project takes more than 30 seconds at times, which can be really frustrating. There are some fixes to these problems, but those include clearing your browser cache and having to restart your computer each time, which seems like a lot of work. But if you don't encounter those problems, it works pretty well. Now the first category is the visual interface, so the drag and drop aspect of the tool, right? For Webflow, we have our add panel on the left, uh, the symbols, which are like the reusable components, the navigator, which contains all the elements in our page in a structured way, the pages, our CMS collections, and assets, and then finally our settings. We also have the button that we can use to switch our site to an e-commerce site. On the right, we're able to edit the properties of these elements, so things like the color or the text. Finally, we also have the interaction panel of all the way to the right. We also have the ability to switch pages in the top bar that's covering our page, 
uh, as well as a quick way to preview your website. We you can also click through the different breakpoints to design a responsive website. Of course, there is also the undo redo, uh, the export code function, as well as a button to publish our site to the webflow.io domain. In Editor X, the idea is pretty similar. Again, we have the add panel, then we have layers, which is similar to the navigator from Webflow, masters, which is like um, symbols in Webflow, pages, site styles, plugins, and then finally the content manager system, or the CMS. On the right, there's zoom in, undo, and redo. Uh, we also have notifications and the built-in chat to talk to collaborators. And then finally, we have the properties. One note about Editor X is that it allows you to place elements wherever you want on the canvas using something called docking, which is similar to Figma. I personally don't like this feature too much only because I prefer to use things like Flexbox and Position Absolute, but I can see why people like it from a design standpoint. Overall, I think Editor X has a more comfortable, user-friendly look to it. It's bright, there's lots of rounded corners, it looks modern. Uh, it's very similar to, again, design tools like Figma. So if you're coming from that background, I think this would be more appealing. For me, even though Webflow isn't the best or most inviting looking of tools, it has functionality. At the end of the day, that's what matters to me. There's a learning curve with both the interfaces, but I can see how Editor X can be easier to pick up. Okay, uh, next up, interactions. So what about them? Webflow is currently way ahead of the game when it comes to interactions, and that makes sense considering it's been here longer. Editor X still has to play catch up on a lot of those features because Webflow has truly mastered them. You're able to create hover, click, scroll-based, parallax, and mouse movement interactions with so much precision and customizability. It's amazing. Right now, Editor X has launched hover and click interactions in beta, which works similarly to Webflow, but there just isn't enough triggers at this time to make it a comparable choice. Building a website in 2022 means building a responsive website, and both of these tools are great at that. You can edit the styles based on breakpoint and they cascade down, just like they would in CSS, and they both work great. When you use the built-in navbar component in Webflow and the built-in header component in Editor X, you and, and you switch to tablet breakpoints or mobile breakpoints, there's already a hamburger menu there for you to style, and it definitely speeds up design. That's one of the things that I love about no code. Being able to create a responsive site is extremely hard, and anyone who has tried to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript knows what I'm talking about. Making websites mobile friendly is a necessity now, and with no code, it's never been easier. Something that else that I find personally important is a community slash help you can get from forums, YouTube videos, and more. Obviously, Webflow has been around longer, so there's more people using it, which means more people on the forums, etc., etc. They also have some amazing YouTube videos to start you off with just a little bit of humor to lighten up the otherwise monotonous world of tutorials. Editor X also has a lot of team members answering questions on their forums, which guarantees good solutions, and they have videos on YouTube as well. Okay, speed round time. So these are things that I personally find are pretty important, but I don't think they're um, big enough to be a category on their own, so let's just go right into it. When designing in CSS, you have classes, and classes allow you to save styling information so you can apply the same classes to multiple elements and have all of them change when you change one. Webflow supports classes and even combo classes for when you want to get really specific, but Editor X doesn't work like that. Flexbox and Grid. Okay, building a website now means knowing these concepts, and both Webflow and Editor X are great at visualizing these tools to make them easier to understand. Just note that Editor X calls Flexbox stacks. Next, the file formats that are supported. There's an extensive list for Webflow, so I'm not going to try to read it out. So here it is. The same goes with Editor X, so I'll just Put the links down in the description box below for anyone that's curious. On a similar note, the units of measure that are supported, things like pixels, rems, vhs, etc. There's links in the description down below for those as well, but just note that Webflow supports EMs and REMs, something that I use extensively to create responsive typography, but Editor X still doesn't. Lottie animations. So Lottie animations look really cool on websites. Just recently, on August 4th, Editor X dropped a uh, got support um, for Lottie animations, but you can only input the animation, so you can bring them in as a JSON file and put them in there. But um, in Webflow, you can actually interact with them. So what that means is you can set up a scroll-based animation to get the Lottie animation to sort of play through as you're scrolling, which is really cool. Uh, next up, okay, fonts. You can upload your own fonts in both the platforms, but with Webflow, you can choose from Google Fonts as well, which I find speeds up design. Uh, okay. 
borders. So borders, this is a minor issue, but borders can only be individually manipulated in web flows. So that's things like I can set the left side of the border to be red while the right side to be, for example, blue. And that's fine. Like I, I can change the width of the border on the left side to be three pixels and I can change the width on the right to be two pixels. Like I can do that. But in Editor X, you can sort of, um, you have to change all of them at once. So you can only have one color and one width. It's not too big of a deal, but I noticed it when I was creating Gumroad's website specifically, only because there are some places in there where I need borders only for the bottom or only for the right and things like that. Finally, Editor X has scalable text, which means you can set a minimum font size and a maximum. But know that these are still um, in pixels and not in uh, responsive font sizes. Okay, that's the end of the speed round, and it's also the end of this video. To wrap this up, if I personally want to create a good looking interactive website, Webflow is going to win every single time, for me at least. Yes, there's more things to learn, but ultimately it pays off. The level of advanced websites you can create when you've mastered the tool is beyond amazing. Editor X, despite being new, has proven itself to be a strong competitor for Webflow. Right now, there's a lot of catching up to do for Editor X, but it has great potential, and I'm excited to see what they come up with for Editor X in the future. It's also nice to see that they're offering a new take on no-code website building with the drag and drop features and the more design-oriented layout. No code is ever evolving, and there's always new use cases for it, but there will be times where using a website builder is just not enough, and for that, there will always be code. That's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment down below. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!